Hey, what's up? AST, bring you Destiny 6. Today, we're gonna do about PvP Arena. And today, we're gonna talk about um, some ways to perform your arena's um, battle. So, as you can see, before I continue, over here, that's a medal. <clears throat> I think a medal or badge or whatsoever. So, that's the only way to get um, the medal through PvP common arena and special arena so before i continue let's see what this uh metal can do so if you go to the shop here under the summon banner okay this is where we will spend our medals okay definitely we need, uh is always best to spend this uh skill ragoon which will give you uh every week okay every tw uh seven days uh will be refreshed so always buy that because it's um quite limited other than buying in time shop and black market and also, as well you can also spend your medal for 10 adventure key for every 50 medal so other than that there's not much use for medals um other than summons and exchanging it for adventure key so mm. let's go on to help mm. okay to say uh this Let's see, um, under arena. So we're gonna talk more about arena. Um, the thing over here to understand what is the difference between arena and PVE. So first of all, um, the first two lines is just nothing. Um, so you always fight against the arenas, um, the team that you have set for your arena. So. Manual control of the heroes is disabled. The fourth line over here. Manual control of the of the heroes is disabled there's a way that you can control is by using drag skill where you drag the skill across the screen or somewhere and your hero actually will move to that location to perform so at times that may, might come in handy but at times it might not um okay and you can okay so this thing is called honor points whatever we get the message okay so over here once we reach a specific rank okay we will earn more point more metal i think when you just started out each week up upon which each reset you receive about three points and slowly as you progress at master rank where you need to acquire 2500 points you will start to earn six points per win every every time you lose you will earn one medal so that's not that bad and that's why if you really do well in your arena you'll keep earning a lot of points which is sufficient more than sufficient to do a few summons as well as buying that skill ragoon so next we're going to talk about the reward okay every week um upon ranking there's a reward so building in pvp really helps you progress a bit faster because you earn more rubies okay i mute the sound effects because at uh, i i remember re listening back to the video and it was really loud okay so let's look at the reward okay and uh i got three win streak that's pathetic but i had about 100 before some people don't need to just intercept me so i'm going to talk about some teams later so not to worry so this is a, league, a weekly league award where it's universal you don't have to reach a certain rank but you just need to reach a certain points and to be champion you need uh 3000 points to get 2k rubies that week all right it's not that difficult if you're able to have good win rates and you don't have to spend on refills so far i haven't spent on any refills i might um tomorrow yep so it's quite good looking at the rewards if you just climb it will be good and weekly ranking reward at the start, you should try to always aim for at least five above, uh, in between five, uh, yeah, um, below five k rank to get the seven hundred extra seven hundred rubies, and over here. Okay, as you can see, I'm still not in the top two hundred without with refill. So at champion, I believe your rank would be about this bracket, um, five hundred to one thousandth um rank, currently, I'm not sure whether it will, um. It will fluctuate next time when there are more players who really play the game. So, once you reach champion, you get 2,000 points. And if you're not going to play that much, you should get another 800 rubies from this um, bracket. 500 
to the 1000th um, rank. And if you really do very well with a high win rate, without refills, we'll be in the next bracket, which is I am right now. And if I'm willing to spend a bit more on um, this common arena um, wings, or, or so not wings, uh, swords, uh, I will move on to the next bracket and that's 500 more. So it might be worth it. So let's ask, uh, let's ask ourselves, um, uh, where can we get this um, key? Can we purchase it? Yes, you can. And under shop, Okay, go on to charge. Okay, and then you can see you can purchase 10 arena keys for 100 rupees. So if you buy three of them, that will cost 300 rupees. Same goes to the special arena key. So, are there any other ways to get these arena keys other than waiting every 30 minutes or purchase this 100 rupees, which is rather expensive? Yes, there is. Okay, I have bought some in. Um, Belisa's black market and as you can see I got this 30 uh, arena keys and this arena key is 30 arena keys for about 180 um, rubies so in a way it's much more um, valuable to purchase it at the black market rather than trying to spend on this so if you would like you could you should actually stock up on these common arena keys and find which way you feel comfortable in pushing yourself to the next bracket or more and then just spam all at one go it's much more ruby efficient that way yeah so i'm going to talk about special arena later but my focus now it will be on common arena okay it's time for me to um just use a sword so in pvp the most important thing actually is actually a skill cooldown reduction this stat is very valuable every one on my team has close to 30 percent with scissors chrono except for julian i think because um julian i built him as a nuke so i'm not really worried about his um skill cooldown reduction i want him to nuke hard so this team I have featured in my previous two episodes and to me it works the best. Uh this paper done is so uh okay it took rather long to stun. Okay, so if he managed to intercept uh what <laughs> my Julian didn't create at all. And I need to suffer for the next eight seconds, but because of the debuff, um I don't know whether I can sustain. Um, okay, yeah, I won. Okay, usually my team would win within 10 seconds, but there's some lagness earlier. So what happened is that um, um, the stun was rather long, but I still won. But okay. So first of all, well, um, I'm going to introduce some teams okay, to prevent that from happening. Um, I will go back to the main page because I don't want to fight accidentally. Okay, so I'm going to talk about some team um, for PvP. The problem is that for um, as compared to some games, um, you can't choose the t uh, the, your enemy. You can't choose your enemy. So is there a best team for all? Okay, so the most common team um, some might think is actually um, this and this, whatever um position they're in i don't, don't really care so um let's see where's my tyler okay where are you where are you okay over here this is a common setup in arena whereby you use um nucus okay you, Nucus is good in a way, but not that good because there's one problem is that um, you need to buff up first before you can nuke that well. So if you don't have um, someone to protect you in terms of like shield, um, invulnerability shield, what happens is that you might get intercept and you might get stripped by strippers like Paper Code and that might um, screw up your normal routine in your in new king and you might lose as a result okay so one of the main nemesis in pvp is this definitely okay i'm gonna put the nemesis on this arena team so first of all this would be the first nemesis 
biggest nemesis actually. Okay, yep, I know. Um, next, another nemesis would be this. Um, Shao, because of a certain skill. And Paper Crew as well is one of the biggest threat in um, PvP. So, is there another threat as dangerous as them? In my opinion, not so bad. I don't think I have any mobs. I'm not sure whether there are others. But this tree actually is the main um, nemesis for most PvP. So, we're going to look at the skill Y. Because first of all, let's look at Shao Sims in the left. First of all, this skill. Um, it removes your shield at 100% chance, of course, it can be resisted. So, it's quite good in a way. It's, if you are going to use a shielder, you must be aware of this um, um, thing. Because it's stripped and most likely it will land a stun somehow, even though it says like 35%. Mine is level 3. I think it upgraded in percentage. And status uh, activation chance as well, that will increase much more. Um, chance to stun. So at times it will intercept somewhat any stun unit is quite a uh, threat, and especially this shield remove debuff, uh, shield bar, uh, shield removal, which is um, annoying at times. Okay, next we're gonna talk about people Adonis is in the middle. Okay, and what about people Adonis is this stupid solid stance, and mine is only uh, six seconds at max is eight seconds, so um. The thing is that, especially for if you're going to use a nuking team, the problem is that you you use all your buff beautifully, but however, before you press that paper friend's first skill, what happened is paper Adonis will use this solid stance and then it will negate any damage done to them. So it's very irritating because um, you don't have a shield removal and as well, you don't control, you cannot um, use any CC skills to control Paper Adonis, and that's when the shield might pop up, and then you have to suffer for the next 8 seconds, and then by then your buff would be gone, or the other CC, they might CC you until you cannot even use your skill, and so on. Okay, next, we talk about Paper Crew, and Paper Crew is the most irritating mob in PvP. Why? Because the stun rate is really high, 38%. So... <clears throat> And additional bleeding, but that's not the point. Um, that stun effect is really good, and this the second skill is a thirty five percent chance to stun, and at the same time you're able to strip two buffs from a target. So imagine you buff very nicely, and then the paper could just throw in the fist without stun. Your your buff would be stripped as well, and at level three or level four, you strip two buffs instead. And that is really annoying, especially when you're just using a damage nuclear team without any protection. Paper Crew is the one that um, strips you off. Another good stripper would be <coughs> Caesar's Net. I have her as 6 star, but I don't really use her that much. And if you look at her skill, just to talk about her skill a bit, um, you realize that at level 4, that doesn't, that doesn't, doesn't seem any upgrade. As you can see, level 3 to level 4, there's no highlight to what is improved. Okay, my suspicion is that um, you strip two buff at level four. Okay, because the first skill uh, you're able to strip, eh? as you can see, buff removal. So from level one to three is one buff, but level four onwards is two buff each time she strikes. And the cooldown is really fast for 15 seconds at max level. It's really good. <clears throat> um, as well as she's able to heal for both skills. So... In PvP, you need to be worried about three things. Paper Adonis, Caesar's If might work as well, but Caesar's If at most is only 6 seconds. It's not as threatful as um, Paper Adonis. The second unit, that the f next few units, okay, I'm not going to pl uh, place them as priority. Caesar Shell because of the shield removal and that stupid stun. And Paper Crow, okay, the stun lock. Especially, you do not know why without any paper Helgash, he's still able to stun continuously for 3 seconds each casting of the skill, which is really dangerous. And you can see it break point 2 and actually it's the same thing as a remove um, 2 buffs. With the high chance to stun, Paper Crew is one of the best PvP monster. Okay, so I've talked about damage nuker, um, talk about nemesis. Now, some of you might prefer... Um, 
a tank, um, tank and a DD combined team. Maybe like, maybe like this team. This team is already quite good on its own. Actually, you can shield yourself to protect you. Like if enemy has some buffers, you cast the shield before they cast their main attacking skill. They can't do anything, and if they do, if they cast the shield, what you can do is you can use paper cool or, um, scissor shell to remove the buff. Okay, so it's rather handy. This is one of the common teams. Um, some might include a uh, damage dealer like June. Um, yeah, but to me, um, because we cannot choose who we'll fight, so I would be rather more concerned about arena offense. Damage dealers as a whole team as a damage nuke to me is not viable in most cases, especially in high-end arena, because there's a risk of being interrupted by paper adonis or in stuns stunning units so as i've used but earlier i use this team and some of you might ask why do i use rock julia knowing that there are a lot of paper teams paper leader out there so first of all i don't care what whatever as long as i stun lock the opponent i mean it doesn't matter my julian is rather rock type or whatsoever he will do the additional um 20 crit damage because of his leader skill and that's what i'm looking for if i make the switch here it doesn't work that much increase attack but to me i rather focus on crit damage because the main his war damage is from his second skill when you ignore defense and i believe earlier that match that i have um my julian didn't stun i mean didn't um ignore defense at all otherwise it will be easy okay so i'm gonna talk about my stats of my pvp team much in depth so first of all paper helga is the mvp here all right as you can see i gave her skill cooldown reduction to 24 percent very essential together with scissors chrono 31 percent skill cooldown reduction and at most in pvp i will have just have to wait for just one second to use her buff and what's a buff for? Let's read. And it's a max skill. Because when you max skill, the cooldown is uh, reduced by 5 seconds. So as you can see, increased damage dealt by allies by 50%. This is useful for my paper code as well as um, my Julian. Because um, with the spotlight, uh, my Julian would be able to do much more damage and my paper cool would be able to do critical damage as well higher critical damage and the status activation chance by 50 percent would increase my paper cool up to 100 percent stun rate if you follow me in my previous episode i have 100 percent stun rate for my um paper cool and why is it so if you look here he has 15 percent status activation chance which means that the lowest percentage of his skill is 35 percent you add that by 15 percent you get 50 percent chance to stun or whatsoever with paper how guy would it would be 100 percent stun uh 100 percent chance to stun and whatsoever and of course the skill cooldown reduction is 23 percent it's very essential to have skill cooldown reduction in pvp because of the fact that you want your skill to be available immediately for my case um it's a stun lock team i need to stun at at the very beginning of the match that would um secure my win 95 percent of the time okay and then it will be up to julian to finish off and this is my julian stats um skill cooldown reduction is 10 percent, not that high because i didn't give him um um a lot of grid uh, sets just one set only so that's five percent and the rest from subs um, status activation all don't care and as you can see um, the crit rate is 44% which is rather high with spotlight is 64% crit rate and that would mean that I would be able to ignore uh, enemy's defense 64% of the time which I am able to do like about I don't know, know why 20k to about 40k damage um, crit damage because of the ignore upon critical hit so to me crit rate is um, the key Key, um stats for rock julian of course don't forget the attack stats yeah okay with your cooldown at very high um percentage you don't have to worry about waiting paper helga's buff because i remember last week when i was um doing this video my paper helga at times had to wait for about five seconds long with max skill i just only have to wait about one second so this team works let me 
explain why. Okay, this team is more on my skills alone. I don't have to care about pe uh, opponent's tankiness. Um, I don't have to care much about whether people will strip me or whatsoever. This team to me is called the fastest fingers first because if I'm able to land stun first, I would be guaranteed the win most of the time. And I hope that actually Julian would crit, otherwise I'm screwed at times because um, I need that nuking damage to kill um, the enemy before um, whatsoever. And based on the current um, stats of my team, I am able to stun lock uh, the opponent for 9 seconds if I stun first. So, in my opinion, um, if you face a, a team that is full of damage dealers, you don't have to worry at all because you can easily screw them up because once they buff, you can just strip. They're not so much as a threat because you can interrupt them easily. The most scary... Um, team that I face is actually Caesar Shao, Paper Adonis, Paper Cool on um, this component. Caesar's Kalota, I, I don't have her yet. So Caesar's Kalota with Paper Adonis is another irritating combo because you're able to cast the shield like almost back to back. Um, yeah, almost back to back to... So that would be 16 seconds um, in vulnerability shield. And if I don't finish the opponent team within 10 seconds, most of the time I would lose 99% of the time. So this team to me is the best because once I'm able to stun, I'm, the match is mine. So let's just, just finish this um, arena keys that I've stocked up. Okay. Before I go to the special arena, Okay, so today is Saturday, so tomorrow will be um, the reset day. So, okay, so I'm afraid that my phone is a bit laggy. But, so bear with me, and at times um, the skill won't do well. Okay, so first of all, um, let's see what does this drag skill might affect. Okay, I know some, we cannot control the movement of our heroes, but actually we can by using drag skill. So if you're unaware of that, um, especially if you're using a buffer or a melee attacker, you can actually bring use the drag skill to bring to a specific location. But to prevent that, I can't use that from Rock Julian because he's a ranged unit and it's rather hard. And as you can see, opponent has Scissor Shao and um, Paper Core. So I'm very um, afraid of what might happen. So I'm just going to use um, Paper Hauga's buff as a drag skill so that you can see that actually you can control some movement of our units. Okay, let's go. Okay, so as you can see, he w he went bizarre and went too far, and I missed the spotlight. So I only got forty four. Oh, okay, it's done. So I'm done within seven seconds. And to me, I rather just um play every round of PvP about ten seconds, because it's a drag to really play for a PvP for more than um more than a minute. To me, it's boring in a way that you have to put so much energy, and I'm gonna share with you a bit about team building especially you don't want to put in too much effort for minimal minimal result what we have what we should be doing especially at start of game after game we want to um we want to put in minimum effort for maximum results otherwise we're gonna spend a lot of time building nonsense and then we can't get the result that we want and then we end up like hating the game so right now um, the opponent is just paper cool is a threat, so as long as I get my stun lock, I'm, I should get the win. Okay. Okay. So that's a delay over there. I do not know why. But because um, Salmon Hand uh, is a bit um, slow in a way. It's not like immediately go to the target and stun. So actually, the first skill of paper cool has a delay. And at times, it can be evaded. And that happens to me a bit in PVE because when the uh, uh, unit move and I didn't and I press stun sometimes it will miss badly, yeah. So the second skill is more accurate in that sense that it will go up to the enemy and stun. But for a moving target, um, at times you will miss the stun as well. So have to be careful. So the reason why I use bleed first is because um. Bleed is always good when the opponent has more HP because you do much more damage. And then after that, then I use my nuking skill because um, Bleed won't be that effective at high, uh, lower HP. So let me just finish this um, arena keys, then I'll move on to special arena.
so as you can see cooldown is very good yeah and the stun is slow okay um yeah so we got it and this is my most favorite uh, pvp team in terms of offense because well you can actually win any kind of for for this team i can win almost 98 percent of the enemy whichever whether they have paper or or whatsoever as long as i get my stun and i'll show you my stats later i didn't show you clearly but um my stats is about 98 percent win rate so far and I decide to actually climb to the climb to the next bracket. I believe by just spending thirty arena keys, I believe I can get five hundred more rubies. So it's a profit to me. Why not, right? Okay. So this one, this team, Rock Luna. Um, I'm gonna go for the stun first because, yeah, um, the silence is really irritating. Knowing um your opponent's um team would determine. Um, how to handle the match better so always look at the opponent's um, team before you fight okay so we're done with normal arena so I've shared with you my team because my team is fastest fingers first if anything that is wrong with my team I just blame on myself because my fingers is too slow maybe there's some tilts like when I press uh, just now uh, salmon hand salmon hand it's actually salmon right yes yeah, salmon hand and you see that there's a long cast because my paper code was too far and if i use drag skill i'm afraid i might miss because at times melee attackers will go towards to your go near to uh your 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 leader and cast and you might miss that and if it's range sometimes like rock julian his first skill will run towards the enemy and you might miss the salmon honey as well so yeah so this is more of more or less the pvp team that i find the most reliable in terms of offense but of course in terms of defense it sucks in a way because um my i need my paper helga buff for that hundred percent um stun but without the buff i have 50 percent chance to stun so in a way it's okay but my team would be easily um uh what was the word easily counted yeah if if someone use real time against the ai of my team so yeah so more or less this is the team that i built about and next i'm gonna go about special arena so special arena is special because there's always a restriction every week and let's look at next week next week is um the same original grade so which means that next week will be n5 n4 n3 and n2 there's no n1 um arena so there are a few um restrictions so it's not uh, mentioned here so first of all um this week's is faction arena it's according to silva inua medina uh what's the next one jean and traga and then next week one will be n5 n4 n3 n2 following week i believe is um pair arena might not be it might not be i think yeah next week should be a pair arena um for pair arena you need to beware of using dupes because dupes of the same attribute don't work you need to use like paper cool and rock cool in the same team to consider as a pair if you use paper cool and paper cool it won't register it is not uh you can't use it right and the last one would be restricted units so you must use that specific units in that as a leader for your arena skill to climb or do that special arena week so there are only four weeks i think that's not no i don't think there are others okay so first of all the question is when i open this oh no there's five leagues which league should i join so usually Monday is the reset day of special uh, of the special arena where we change all this feature. Spend the first um first two days or so. That's what I did for this week um faction and arena, is to go to each league and just try to win ten wins, okay or five wins because five wins will get you hundred rubies. So the first five wins would usually be the easiest because um you'll fight with those noobs um those um lousy accounts who don't pro didn't progress thanks to rerolls and okay from there okay after you get that amount of rubies if you're able 
go on to 10 wins because another uh, 10 wins will give you another 100 rubies for each leg from then on from 10 wins to 20 20 wins you need another 10 wins to earn 100 rubies which in a way not that um ruby effect uh, ruby cost effective because in in the shop um, 10 special arena keys cost 100 rubies so to win that um, 10 more wins is not um, profitable it's not profitable and it's it's not um, yeah and you might lose because if you're just if you're just starting out you might uh, not have the units and your, your, your units might not be strong enough to handle the thing yeah thing yeah okay so aim at least 10 rain for each leg you should be done by Tuesday so next question is to us compare the legs points rank and the points usually the points would be the same if you get all wins so look at the rank so when i started off so each league i only won um 10 times except for Traga because i'm in Traga union i'm rank 114 so let's just compare the first four legs let's say this is on tuesday i fight 11 uh, 10 times and this is my ranking so as you can see okay Based on the ranking and the points, which are rather similar, you have to ask yourself that which leg is the easiest to climb. So as you can see, the ranking for Silva and Inua, which is rather close, 1,210 points is about 4,377 for Inua, and Silva is 4,500. So you can say that Inua is the easiest to climb. However, for me, why I didn't choose Inua is because... <coughs> You can look at my pathetic units. The six star is only paper cool, and the other two is just rubbish. Actually, I don't really like them. Paper Yona isn't that good, in a way. And I tried to combo. Uh, <coughs> it doesn't work that well. <laughs> okay, so <coughs> I decided not to skip in. I decided to skip Yona um clan because uh, faction because I find that it will be difficult for me to climb. So first of all, you should ask yourself: Are you? Are you? Um, are you skillful enough to climb in that lake? If not, just go to a someone something else more comfortable. So, <clears throat> go to the next lake that is <clears throat> not so difficult to climb. And one problem here is that, okay, um, I have paper Adonis, <clears throat> paper Sierra. So the next question I have to ask myself is, the competition that I'm facing, there will be a lot of paper Adonis, and for me, I'm a lazy person. I don't like to spend each battle. Very long. So what I gonna do? What I'm what I'm doing here is just that. Ah, forget it. I'm not gonna spend my time every battle one minute for this whole week for this special arena. All right. So I skip this, and of course, um, Medina. Okay, which is you can tell that the competition is there for Medina because there are really good mobs in here. Um, Kaluta, friend, and net and whosoever got eve as well and you realize that the competition is really good here because <clears throat> a lot of people have paper friend but i didn't use paper friend so i don't like to use her for pvp because her cleaving skill might miss especially the especially if she's not your leader right because at times the enemy would just run about and your paper friend would miss that tempest her first skill and <laughs> You just have to like, yeah, it's not that good actually, Paper Friend in PvP if you're not using as leader. So, you consider that. And I find that even though Traga is quite difficult, I believe the rank is quite high in Traga. But to me, Traga is the most comfortable um, leg for me to climb because of, okay, as you can see, I have no loss so far. Alright, it's 100% win rate thanks to... My MVP, Paper Helga, not max level yet. I'm lazy to level her up. And as you can see, this is my theme. My theme for this faction. I didn't use Paper Gunter because I find that the boost of damage is insignificant to having some CC. And so let's talk about this unit that I have, um, Rock Isaac. And Rock Isaac is only level 32, 5 star, uh, five star awakened. So let's look at her skill. Her skill is actually, her skill set is actually really insane. Okay, she replaces my code. And if you look at the faction or your codex faction, um, 
you realise that there's not much CC units in Chaga Faction, except for maybe Caesar's uh, Julian. Caesar's Julian got one knockdown skill, I think. And Caesar's Gunter as well has some knockdown skill, which is okay. Um, other than that, um, Isaac has a few knockdown skill, but specifically Rock Isaac. Her skill hit her or his. I think it's a guy, it's a boy. Look at the boobs. Is it a boy? Should be a boy. Okay. A skill is really interesting and one of the best skill set actually. So we're gonna look at the first skill. The first skill is okay, it's a knockdown of not twelve seconds. There's a, I think there's a typo there. It's actually four seconds knockdown. Okay, and the burn is whatsoever. So twenty eight percent chance at max. The cooldown will reduce uh, after that. So okay, reasonable. Twenty eight percent chance to knock down with paper Helga that's seventy eight percent. So I need another third, uh twenty two percent to have hundred percent knockback rate for uh, for status activation. So it's rather good, rather reliable for four second knockdown, and you can just uh, wipe the thing with your nuke with Rock Julian. Similar to my common arena team. Just that I don't have that nice second stun lock. But the second steal is really amazing. Okay. At max, you can have 15% chance to shock and silence. I think that if you don't have a shock unit for um, for Giant Age, she would be a good replacement. So what about uh, Isaac Koi? The skill is that he will plant like a landmine. That will shock enemies six times over a duration of three seconds. And during that time, you have this 15% chance to shock as well as silence. <laughs> that's really amazing. With Paper Helga, that's 65% chance to shock and silence. And the silence here is what I'm talking about. It's the most valuable thing in this skill. Silence block out the skill. They cannot cast any nonsense. And that actually secure most of my matches. <laughs> Okay, but of course, 65% chance means that you need 35% status activation chance to land as 100% um, shock and silence. But it's still good. So I'm going to show you my stats. It's not the best, but I gave her precision rune, runes. Um, the red crest. Oh, sorry, red crest. Okay, precision crest, not runes. Wrong game. All right. So as you can see from her stats, uh, I didn't focus much on still cooldown reduction because I don't find the significance in having her having max cooldown because it's still not max yet. And I find that the stuns, the chance to silence is much more important. That's why I went for that. Unless I can find a balance between skill cooldown reduction and status activation. Anyway, I'm just using her for this week's special arena. And she's my partly MVP of the team where she's able to knock down for 4 seconds and let's see. Crazy Silence, and I, I mentioned earlier, I've counted there are 6 hits within 3 seconds, so every half a second it will hit once, and that's a 15% chance to shock and silence. Mine is not, mine is only 10%, so that's 60% um, chance. With status activation chance, is 85% chance to start, uh, shock and silence. 20% plus Paper Saga, 50% is 70%. 70% plus 25%. So I have 95% chance to knock back. That's it's actually rather reliable. And that burn effect as well. So, as mentioned, Paper Helga has two buff. One buff is increased status activation. That's for my Isaac. And the damage boost for my Rock Julian. So using this team actually secures most of my fight. I would prefer a cooldown leader. But with this crit rate um, percentage, my Rock Julian has 71% to crit. So it's better the way. Um, the previous common arena, I have no choice because I really need her buff immediately. I use Caesar's Corona instead. Alright, so let's just use this. Okay, as mentioned, um, do try out before you focus on the leg. At least try to get 10 wins for each uh, leg before deciding which, um, which leg you want to focus on. Because after 10 wins, it's not worth to go for that extra mile. In terms of rubies, if you want to go collect more gold or whatsoever, it doesn't matter. Because ultimately, at the end of the leg or the week, what happens? Let me pause and finish my explanation. I can't focus. So, um, you will only get the rubies, extra rubies, based on the best leg that you have done. So, out of the five, I did well for my Traga. Uh, arena so that is the only way for me to I mean I only received that weekly reward of 
X amount of rubies. Later on, I'll explain further. So let me just finish this five special arena keys. So let's do this Isaac um, showcase. Silence and shock. Okay? Land. And they can't do anything. Yeah? They can't do anything. Okay, even though they have no more HP, I don't have to worry that much. Okay? The silence is and stun is a uh, shock. The silence especially is really imba. Alright? But at times, my stun and uh, my silence skill might be on cooldown. So we're going to see some example in that. But no matter, the knockdown with 95% chance to do so is rather reliable. So far, yeah. Anyway, if that happens, I can still use my people Helga to uh, reduce crit rate and damage. So it's not so scary because most of their team will be damage dealing. So once you can um, CC it, uh, CC a bit yeah you don't have to worry that much Julian is in more than enough as a nuka okay there we go we've done this round okay it's lagging a bit not that bad so the reason why I go for this build and I replace Kor as Isaac and I'm considering to 6 star her uh, maybe for the extra Devimon Skill Ragoon, sorry, wrong game again. Um, for the extra skill Ragoon, I'm not sure because her skill is really amazing. But I need more status activation chance, so we see how it goes. Okay, I still got three more keys. So I might just pump to push to top 50 or something like that. Okay, so over here I don't have that thing. So that knockdown, as you can see, knockdown, they really lie on the floor. Okay, so. Yeah, it's like a given. Okay, so trauma fraction. Even though the the I will have a lot of competition over there, but I trust my units, especially Paper Helga. She's the MVP and give the extra, um, sated activation boost. That's why I use this team and concentrate on this faction. So at times it's not just about whether it's easy to climb. Um, whether there's no competition or no competitor with the same leg. The concern is whether you're able to secure a high win rate with the number of keys that you have. Yeah. So win rate is really important. Focus on that. Okay. And oh yeah, I forgot to mention one thing is that we need to uh mention earlier that it's good to focus on units that will give you both PvP and PV PvP and PvE um uh that will help you in both pve and pvp expect because we don't want to waste our resources that much and yeah paper helga is really awesome she's really helpful in giants um conquest not so useful in pve maps yeah rock julian to me i use him in daily dun dungeons like um the awakening uh, materials sometimes i use him in not, not much actually I use him in PvE, PvP because of the single target um, nuke that he has. Other than that, um, Paper Friend I use for PvE. I don't use her much in other places. Okay, yeah, 7 minutes after 6pm would be that thing. Don't let me lose. Okay, we got it. Yeah, so... This team is really reliable. Okay, my team doesn't actually need a striker. I just use the striker as the leader skill. So that's it. 177 win streak for to for this week. Okay. And <clears throat> Paper Helga is actually a very good unit. I say that a lot of times. Yep. So more or less I'm actually done with the PvP content. So yeah. So there are a few things to consider. Do consider them. I've raised throughout the video. So, as you can see, at one ring, give me six medal. I gain six medal per win, so sixty medals within every two hour, two, two and a half hours. And yeah, you want to concentrate on units that has both benefit to you in PvP and PvE. So I like this two a lot, Paper Cool and Paper Helga, because it helps me in conquest and gi giants and whatsoever. Paper Cool is a very good unit throughout the whole game, in good in PvE because of breaking points. Um. Yeah, in Giant 8 as well, the new Giant 8, 
uh, Grimlock, I think. Yeah, it also rely on stun, um, stun breaking skills. Paper Crew is the one that has it. Um, good in the old giant, the Death H, I think. Yeah, yeah, he's also good as a bleeder together with Paper Helga. Yes, move. Okay, All right, and Rock Julian, I use him mostly on daily awakening dungeon but that's about it for rock julian and pvp uh i might use rock june next time i'm not sure but i might consider because his damage is rather good as well 30 percent uh, sacrifice damage all right so so build teams around your pvp team because um for your pvp team you definitely want all those skills to be on cooldown on reduced cooldown at, at a certain level so yeah, is paper hugger is worth that ten uh ten skill ragoons to up all the way to level five because level five then she will have that five second cooldown which is very important in the arena which I have showcased earlier. I just only have to wait for one second, one second for her to buff and my, um uh, paper crew would just nuke uh would just stun lock and it's up to my rock Julian to crit the enemies to death. Yeah, so more or less that's about it. And of course, I will show you my new record for Tower of Promises 60 is actually 24 seconds. Yep, I will sh I hope I put the screenshot. I remember to put that. And that's about it. Today is Saturday. Tomorrow is the reset. Hope you do well for your arena. Do, cons <coughs> Sorry. do consider these points that I've raised. And yeah, and have fun. That's 26. Alright, so that's about it. See you and adios and sayonara and... Uh, Titan and bye bye. Yeah. Bye.